let's look in a little more detail at how the Internet of Things works. As we saw, the Internet of Things is um, smart edge devices with their own processors and I.O. connected to databases uh, and processing uh, servers in the cloud. So on the cloud side, uh, we need a database to provide storage for uh, the data that we get from the edge devices. Um, these will talk to, to the devices um, and, and gather the data and usually they include a web-based interface or other app type interface so that users or system administrators can make use of that data. Exactly who has access to the data depends on the application. In some cases you may only want certain people to look at things. In other cases you may want a um, variety of people to look at the data. Um, so we can organize the cloud side either as a true cloud-based database or basically run our own uh, database on our own machine uh, that's connected to the internet but isn't from a, a large-scale cloud provider. Um, so the cloud side is very important because the database design and the search capabilities we put with the database are uh, where a lot of the power of the Internet of Things comes from and, and designing the database uh, determines what the system can do, what data we can find, how we can manipulate it. So there are two ways to think about the cloud side architecture. One is as a uh, traditional relational database and we can build this kind of application using systems like Ruby's on Rails or other uh, database building systems of your choice. Uh, so a relational database has a structured view of data and it provides us with some very powerful tools that allow us to search on that data. Okay? By structured we mean that uh, the data is organized into certain forms. On the other hand there are cloud storage services um, from a variety of providers. Um, and the, the basic storage services are f what we call flat data. They don't have any particular structure. But you can put um, search features on top of, uh, of this data. Um, cloud storage services um, give you um, flexibility in um, how you deal with the data. They give you uh, persistence. Uh, typically you have to uh, pay for them separately. So uh, a relational database, as we said, is structured data. Um, the, so the data is organized into tables and each table has records. So here is a simple table. Each line in the table is a record. Okay? So we have different fields or columns in a table. Okay? Uh, so, for example, when we do a search, we can ask uh, the database which records in this table have, for instance, the device ID field equal to 1. And that will, uh, then the database will search through the entire table and give us every record whose device, uh, whose uh, ID is equal to 1. That would be this line and this line and this line. Okay, so that would give us all the data in each of these records. Then we can take that data and do what we want with it. We could look at the time, we could look at the temperature, we could look at the humidity. But we can also search the database in different ways. We could ask, for example, uh, what records have a time of 1202? In that case, we would get these two records, uh, one for device ID 1 and one for device ID 2. Um, so when we query, we can look, uh, ask for a, uh, the values in a single column, uh, or we can combine things. For instance, we could say um, device ID 1 and time equals 1202. That would give us this record here. Okay? So we can um, test values and we can do Boolean combinations. Once we have those records, our application can um, do interesting things on the values um, and also update the database. 
Now on the device side, uh, we have a couple of decisions we have to make. One is a smart versus a uh, dumb device. So in a smart device, it has its own uh, internet connection. It ha uh, usually has its own um, web uh, software and it can perform its own transactions. So it could, for instance, talk directly to the cloud and put data in the database. Uh, a dumb device uses a, a, a more traditional connection like Bluetooth or USB and um, can, can talk to a host computer but it can't talk uh, directly over the internet so it would rely on the host computer to transfer data to the internet. Um, we also have to think about what type of uh, network connection we're going to use. Do we use a wired versus wireless connection? Do we use Wi-Fi? Do we use uh, Bluetooth? Do we use Zigbee? Um, those uh, decisions uh, affect things like the power consumption. They also affect you know, what chips we need to use, uh, what boards we need to use for the system. Okay. So on, if we think about the architecture of a um, um, device that uses a dumb uh, edge device, we have our embedded device here. We may use Bluetooth or USB or some other connection to talk to a client machine. That client machine has an app running on it that talks on the one hand to our embedded device and on the other hand to the cloud. Okay? So in addition to developing the embedded device, we have to develop the app. Okay? So let's compare uh, these two options. The smart edge device um, needs some sort of physical connection that's internet capable. Uh, could, could be ethernet, could be Wi-Fi. Um, and that may increase the cost of our, of our board. It may also increase the power consumption. Um, having this direct internet connection means that it takes less time uh, to get data up to the cloud or get data from the cloud back down. So we reduce the latency. Uh, because we don't have this additional app in the middle, initialization and reset when something goes wrong, uh, is easier. We basically only have to worry about the, the edge device and not about the app. Um, we, but we need to be careful to take into account uh, security and privacy. Um, that is, when we put the internet directly on the device, that device can be hacked and we have to be very careful uh, about um, making sure that our device is secure. If we think about the client-based dumb solution, uh, we need to develop the application, we need to install the application, we need to connect up our um, uh, embedded device to the uh, client. Um, but it does simplify the software on the device. Okay. Uh, now be, uh, be careful that can, talking to a PC over um, Ethernet or USB um, does take some effort, right? but it still may be simpler than dealing with a full-fledged internet connection. So in summary, uh, embedded plus cloud equals Internet of Things. Uh, we have um, two types of ways of thinking about the device. There's a simpler device with a client that mediates between the device and the cloud, and then there's a directly internet-enabled edge device. Um, and on the cloud side, the database design is a very important aspect because that determines what can be done with the data we get from our edge devices.